YouTube, and welcome back to the Loose Transistor channel. I'm your host, Lucas, and today we're going to be talking about the new F port protocol that just got announced by Betaflight. So in my quest to always bring you guys the newest and latest and greatest in the drones, uh, I was uh, checking out the Betaflight releases on GitHub, and they were talking about this new F port protocol. So uh, I waited for them to release the, the spec and do some reading on that so that I could bring you guys the information, and they just released it the other day, so I figured I would talk to you guys right now. and. Uh, let you guys know what's new about it. So first we'll talk a little bit about SBUS. So the deal with SBUS is that uh, Futaba basically made SBUS as a faster protocol to uh, pass down serial data to a flight controller or to control your aircraft in some way. So when they created that protocol, they wanted to somewhat make it difficult to copy or difficult for other people to use it. So they did a couple of things. They changed the way that they handled the data and they also inverted the signal. That's why with a lot of FRSky stuff, uh, there's problems with uh, inverted or uninverted ports and people having to find uh, uninverted signals on their RXs or having to use a different port or this and that. So it's kind of a pain in the ass. And the reason this is all came about is literally DRM. So Futaba decided to put some DRM on their stuff and the consequences of that live on. Um, because nobody really wanted to bother making a new uh, protocol because that's a lot of work, it's R&D, and uh, somebody had already reverse engineered SBUS and made it available to other people, so why bother, right? So uh, FR Sky has taken a different approach to it, actually. Uh, they've decided to create this new protocol called the F-Port protocol, which is actually based on the SBUS protocol with a few key little differences here. Uh, one is that it operates at 11,000, sorry, 115,200 baud rate. So it's faster, a little bit faster than the standard SBUS port, but that's because it's also carrying your telemetry data. So instead of having to use a signal pad and a smart port pad on your RX with F port, you can just use a single pad does both your control link and your telemetry, which is pretty cool. So that means that just one less thing for you to have to solder, not that it's a huge deal, but it is kind of cool that they're trying to make things a little bit more compact and easier to manage. So I think this F-Port is an, it's an interesting uh, development in terms of uh, the direction that they want to take this. So I did some digging onto the F-Port protocol, and let's take a look here and I'll let you guys know what's really important here in terms of what it really does. It seems like in terms of latency, it's gonna pretty much remain the same. Uh, the time frame here is about 11 milliseconds between sending the control portion, the data portion, and the uplink portion is a total of about, um, sorry, is it 11? Yep, yeah. it's uh, nine milliseconds for the channel frame, and the slaves respond within three milliseconds, so that's a total of 11 millisecond delay. So not much is gonna change there. Um, however, it seems to be able to do so without an inverted signal, which is awesome. That means that there's no need for uh, uh, inverters on, or uninverters on the board to make it compatible with your RX, which would be really neat. So this stuff is not quite yet rolling out and available entirely. There are instructions as to how you can install it, and I'll leave, leave a link in the description so you guys can check this out for yourselves, do, do some reading on the documentation and see if this is something you want to pursue. But basically it involves uh, having to use an uh, XSR style receiver. It's compatible with uh, the XSR, the X4R, and the XSR-M receiver right now. You have to download a specific firmware to use with your receiver, make sure that you flash it. And you have to go ahead and do some CLI changes to your flight controller to make it compatible with this new mode and flash it with one of the latest nightly builds because the stuff is not quite yet out, I don't think. Let me just uh, open up the releases right now because we all know how fast Betaflight releases stuff. No, yeah, they're not really mentioning anything about this on their official releases, so this is like really cutting edge, bleeding edge type beta stuff. So if you want to try it out and see how, how this works, if you want to not have to use a smart port, all the instructions are going to be available in the link below and you can go ahead and do so yourself at your own risk. I might actually try it out in a little bit. I have some receivers that would be compatible with this and I have a few drones laying around so I might as well give it a try. And if I do do so, I'll definitely update you guys and let you know how it's going. So yeah, guys, that's pretty much it. I just wanted to let you guys know that there's this new cool protocol out there. You might want to do a little bit of reading about it and might want to check it out, but uh, definitely something to keep an eye on out because I'm sure that more and more uh, both Betaflight and FRSky are going to keep pushing this direction and we'll see more of this type of integration. I personally like the idea of not having to use a smart port uh, pad and just having and being able to do it all through one single connection. Sounds pretty awesome to me. So guys, uh, that pretty much covers it in terms of this topic. Uh, the next things that I'm going to be bringing to you guys in the channel are actually going to be a little bit of a series on the DRL. So I've been doing some of the fast lap times on Rotor Rush. 
which has been super fun. But uh, I've finally got uh, DRL working again on my computer, and I've been trying to beat some of the times there and try to compete with some of the top guys, and there's some pretty damn fast times there. So I'll be putting those uh, down below as well, and I'm hoping to get a build going in the next few weeks if possible, but uh, it's just been really, really busy, really hard to get time to actually dedicate to filming, that sort of thing. So guys, as always, thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.